our Squawk Newsmaker of the Hour of the Morning, Galaxy Digital founder and CEO Michael Novogratz is here. We haven't seen you in a while, so thank you for coming in. Thank you. Okay, so we, let's talk, we're going to talk crypto first, and then we can talk about all sorts of other things. But we went through what some people were describing as a crypto winter, and we seem to have come out of it. Is that real or is that a head fake? I think it's real. You know, listen, the, the crypto bubble, uh, I think part of the reason it crashed was that every but who wanted to launch a coin was launching the new Bitcoin. Right. Ethereum was the better Bitcoin. Litecoin was a Bitcoin. You know, everyone had a version of Bitcoin, and so you had supply grow exponentially. Uh, and, and at one point, regulators got a little nervous, and boom, the unwind came. And now I think you're seeing Bitcoin really having established itself as a store of value. Mm -hmm. It won that lane. There's lots of other parts of the crypto universe, but Bitcoin has won the lane of store of value, which is hard to do. You know, there's, there's only really only one other store of value, gold, where you're worth something just because you're worth something. Almost everything else, you're worth something. Like Uber shares are going to be worth something because people are using it. Uh, you know, and, and right. so uh, it's, it's a unique thing that Bitcoin has done. All right, I'll, I want to talk to you about Uber uh, and see what that's worth in just a moment. But, uh, but on Bitcoin, what do you think it is intrinsically worth? There's no, again, what's gold intrinsically worth? You can take all the gold in the history that's ever been mined and put it in three Olympic swimming pools and it's worth eight and a half trillion dollars. Why? It's, it's, it sits in vaults. We don't use gold for anything other than jewelry to show our wealth. Right. Who do you think's buying Bitcoin right now? You know, retail's still buying Bitcoin. Institutions are moving in, right? The Yale Endowment moved into Bitcoin. Stanford Endowment moved into Bitcoin. Uh, Harvard's Endowment has moved into Bitcoin. So these are real names and real right. thoughtful investors. And so what's been happening is we've been building the infrastructure, custody, trading, lending, to allow institutions to feel more comfortable. And then in the last few months, you saw Microsoft say, we're going to do our identity solution and we're going to link it to the Bitcoin blockchain. That's one of the 10 biggest companies in the world saying, we believe in crypto. You there are people who are saying they believe in crypto. I was going to say Facebook, for example, may believe in crypto, but they may believe in their own coin. And we're going to now, could we go back to the same uh, no, no, challenges I, we had a year or two ago when everybody and their brother wanted so to I think one. Facebook's wildly important for the ecosystem, right? Because here you have one of the biggest companies in the world saying cryptocurrency is going to be part of our future. They're, if you believe everything that's been written, going to have a stable-ish stable, stable -ish coin, right? right? A coin that's linked to, to hold steady to some basket of currencies, right? That'll be used for payments. Right. That's their hope. Uh, I don't think that takes away from Bitcoin, quite frankly, it credentializes the whole space. Bitcoin is not going to be a payment currency. Bitcoin is going to be a store belt just like gold. We don't spend gold on anything. Right. You didn't buy that tie with gold. Right. Uh, it's going to be what people perceive as a store of value. And so what do you think it could or could not be worth? I think it could be worth a whole lot more than it's worth today. If you think gold's at eight and a half trillion and Bitcoin's at 140 billion, there's a long way between 140 billion and eight and a half trillion. And you do think though that a lot of the, I mean, the, I used to think to myself, all the people who got burned on the way up and down the last time won't go back in again, and, or, or won't go back in for, for many years. Is that not the case? I don't think it's the case. And, and, and a lot of institutions never got in. So they felt kind of smart. And now I'll just say, wait a minute, now there's more, in, uh, there's right. more cover. But, what about right? retail investors? Fidelity. Though? What? what about retail, listen, retail will come and go, and it's a lot of the guys that got burned won't come, but there's 7.5 billion people on the planet. And so there are plenty of retail customers to continue to come in. You're, you're seeing a, a resurgence in China, a resurgence right. in Japan. Are there any other coins that are interesting to you right now? Sure. The, you know, listen, there's a whole second bucket, uh, what I call Web 3.0, so Ethereum, EOS. Right. EOS. EOS has a big announcement in June. My guess is on that announcement, people get excited, the coin goes higher. Um, they're all fighting to be Web 3.0. Right. Uh, that's going to take a lot longer to play out, right, the technology and uh, and the, and the adoption, I think that's a two to five year play. And it's much more like a venture play uh, than a currency play. Right. Uh, can you get enough people to build on top? And it's got to be useful. Do any of these become currencies? I think Facebook's payment currency, I think Telegram's going to have one. You're going to see one of these payment coins work. And I think that has a chance to be a real currency. Right.